Uh, welcome to the Hornbill podcast featuring Hornbill and starring Hornbill. And uh, today I have the pleasure of speaking to my good buddy Turner from the bands uh, Little Geronimo and Giants of Atlantis. How are you, buddy? Quite well. Thanks for having me. Dude, I'm loving this, like, John Waters mustache you got going on here. <laughs> I have a friend that is going to love that you said that. Like, so, um, somebody, it's it's a friend from here, from Jacks, Florida. Everybody on earth knows this person somehow. And every show, he actually is an owner of the venue that I work at. Okay. And um, just the other night at his show, he was walking around with his phone with a picture of John Waters, just show pointing at me and pointing at everybody, like pointing me out, like. <laughs> but it's, it's accurate though. It does it's look good. Look. It's a look, the John Waters is a look. Uh, dude, so um, we can, which band do you want to jump into first? Cause they're uh, two very different bands. Well, we'll start with Giants, cause that's where my, my music started in Florida. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, so Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, how long have you been living there, first off? Because I know it's been somewhat recent. I, yeah. Yeah, it's since 2017. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And you fell in with some uh, people over there and started Giants of Atlantis. And this is... I, I only really know uh, Little Geronimo, so you got to walk me through this one. Just treat no, me like I'm okay. a six-year-old. So, so Giants is... um has like a strong florida florida metal florida death metal thing going on i mean we never had anything studio tracked we played a ton of shows you know um and it's really fun it's got like a progressive metal core thing but um give me some influences core. yeah yeah so um for me uh when i'm writing i you know, maybe like the Within the Ruins, the Born of Osiris, you know, like, okay. um, but not, not Genty though. It's got, you know, it's got, you can't be Genty and be a Florida death band. Okay. You know, those things are exclusive, <laughs> like, um, Dude, so but the let, other, yeah. let's sidetrack real quick. Um, Within the Ruins, um, I love them. They're a big influence on me, uh, and I take a lot of, um, I don't know, they're noodly little breakdown things and put them into hornbill things, but major key, obviously. Um, I hear it. Um, so, uh, Creature, I love Creature. It's one of my favorite albums ever. Um, that's their first album for anyone listening. Right. Um, and then, uh, shit, what's the second one? Invade? Is that it's right? The one with Road and all of those songs is the one that got me. So, um, I can just look right now and see. Let's see. Uh, I think it so the second album I think they changed singers and then after that things started yeah, getting Yeah, Invade, Invade, yeah. Okay. And then Elite was the next one. Elite yeah. Sick that has Solace and Feeding Frenzy and all those. Um, I think around so yeah, 2017 around this time I think was when I really started getting it. Gotcha. I, um, but yeah, they're great, dude. Like some of their more like major tonality metal shredding I love it. They're great. They're awesome. And then Born of Osiris too. Um, that first album, which was that uh, I don't know, oh six, oh seven, was the New Rain. Yeah. Um, and that Discovery was too. Was, Discovery was after yeah. I, that. Was I think the second one. Um, the first one was I. I loved the first one though. That was when like Sumerian was the record label, and they had. I know shit what after the burial and um yeah. born of osiris and uh stick to your guns is on there at one point straight from the path uh who are the other metal bands from the uh, veil of maya veil yeah that that whole era kind of so good yeah it's so good and it's all like very they're all like pretty similar but i like all of it either way you know, but. they're so similar. Like, so if you take after the burial, born of Osiris, within the ruins, and um, Velamaya, just four, right? They're all super similar, and they're all in that progressive, weird uh, patterns, and um, just 
different, I don't know, just different s soundscaping from what was typical from metalcore at that point in time. Um, and similar, but incredibly different in their own right. And yeah, like, they each do their own thing really well. Like, it's just so to cool. Me, to me, what made that, di like, it's how polished it is. Like, metal was not polished before that. Yeah, you know, and like those albums are mixed like pop almost. Like their mm -hmm. the recordings are so tight and clean. And um, I would yeah, say I that. that modern recording for metal and like heavy rock and stuff like that, like that was that was the blueprint. And now everybody has mm -hmm. pretty much branched off of that because those are, to your point, they're just tight. Everything is yeah, everything is precise and um. It's potentially overproduced. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what puts that's what, it's not accepted by metal elitists is metal, you know, yeah. like they don't not at all. Nope. And it's I mean, and if that if those albums are mixed differently, you have tech death albums. You don't have metal core. It's just the mix that makes it different. Yeah. And those they actually are what got me into tech death, which is mostly what I listen to. Okay. You know, so those were like a totally the gateway for me. So Tech Death, uh, name me a couple that you listen to here and there. Um, to me, like the goat is like Obscura. You know, Obscura, okay. um, Necrophagist kind of invented the genre a little bit. You know, but um, even Death, Death, like Human Death. Yeah. That album has some of that stuff, but. Basically, it's just like the most brutal, shreddiest possible, unplayable things on every instrument. You know, <laughs> is, like, would you consider Beneath the Massacre uh, Tech Death? I don't know that band. Oh, I think you would like them a lot. I'm, I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna add it. I mean, so like big Tech Death, Rivers of Nahil. Okay, right? It's like borderline. Like it's still death metal, but they're more um, like symphonic kind of though, too. Yeah. Yeah, but they share a lot. Uh, those two genres, it's bro, it's metal. You, there's like a million subgenres, but <laughs> but those share like some qualities, like like symphonic tech, I guess would be like rivers. But anyway, yeah, just like the kind of music that most people don't like. And that's <laughs> math rock too. That's you too. If we're being like, oh, people don't like us for sure. So I know all about. Yeah, me too, dude. <laughs> dude like, I can't even write a song alone without it having be them. It'd be like just bullshit. I need somebody to be like, dude, what is this song? I've gotten a lot better, but at the same time, I've gotten uh, technically better at playing instruments. So. It makes the like so this new album, right? It's a lot more refined and it's not as crazy, but there are a couple of songs that are like the craziest. So right, um, right. It's, perfectly balanced. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's good, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's yeah. it's a challenge to write something that isn't a mess. Well, that's what happens when you know you learn how to play guitar looking up to Thomas Arad. You know, or like I guess that. I, I think have that's that it. syndrome. I have that syndrome too. Okay. And I mean, even younger. I mean, the name Jimmy Page syndrome is a thing. You know, like guitarists overwrite songs just like classically. I feel like. Yeah. So that's the perfect way to say that is Thomas or er Thomas Iraq syndrome, Fall of Troy syndrome. Yeah, um, I have it. I mean, I have it dead to rights. <laughs> I'm proud to have it, though. You know, I am too. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> there's yeah. only so many people with that that are, uh, I guess, touring the world and doing incredible things. So um, yeah, very, very few touring the world. I mean, <laughs> no, but I get it. So sorry, the big tangent. Anyway, Go back to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Giants is like a melodic metal band basically okay. um and i moved to florida i wasn't playing with anybody um i was just like posting noodly i think i posted some video that was like intergalactic boss battle theme or something okay and it was just like endless sweeps and somebody was like yo uh you, you playing with anybody and i was like <laughs> no but i'm down oh yeah uh, 
that's how it happened. So okay. Uh, yeah, we played a lot of shows. Um, had some sick ones, you know, like, but gone through some lineup changes, and now we have um, a solid lineup and a really sick vocalist. Um, sick. But he, he comes from a deathcore background, which is not my thing at all, really. Um, and it's not really any of ours, but it mixes really well with the melodic metal theme. It makes us sound much heavier, which I'm always into. I was going to say, if anything, it just brings an outside, um, just an outside uh, uh, vocabulary. Um, what the yeah. fuck is the word I'm thinking of? I don't know. In- like influence. influence. It brings, it brings yeah. an outside influence that otherwise wouldn't be there, and it probably just adds texture to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And anyway, <clears throat> so we got him we, and we've been finally hitting the studio, which is uh been sick, you know. Perfect. And so I also am a talent buyer promoter, you know, I book shows um here and I booked a show for Little Geronimo. It was um cuz I liked the band before I joined the band. Like they're sick. Um, yeah. And I booked them to play with Bill Murray. We had Bill Murray uh, down here, and they like played the Bill Murray, like the band Bill Murray, like B I L M. Oh my god! Okay, so I'm gonna look up the one. What was it called again? The one you told me. Oh, beneath the massacre. Beneath the massacre. Yeah, I'm gonna look I'm that gonna... up, man. Bill Murray's mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> How do you um, spell it? B I L M U R I. Oh. Yeah. So that it's pronounced Bill Mary. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I've ever connected that. I've listened to them before. Right. I just thought it was like B I L L M U R R A Y Bill Mary. No, it's literally Bill Murray. Like, <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, that band is he's the shit, right? He was yeah. like one of the from Attack Attack and everything, but um anyway, I booked Geronimo to play with them. Six show is the last show before pandemic, um, and it went well. That was like March fifteenth or something, and uh, then we booked another little festival. Me and the drummer Geronimo, which is Bug House booking, um, called like a quarantine fest. You know where mm-hmm. we did streams. Gi- on the last day was Little Geronimo and Giants of Atlantis. It was a tough set for Giants of Atlantis. It was a tough set. Uh, our vocalist at the time was was struggling with you know personal issues and anyway it led to somebody passed out on the stage oh, you know and like um yeah so anyway afterwards like i kind of hung out with all the guys from geronimo a couple weeks later brandon the singer of geronimo called me and it's like hey um do you play bass and i was like not really and he was like do you want to and i'm like for sure you know, so um, that's kind of how that happened. So let me ask you the age old question. Are you a guitarist or are you a guitarist playing bass? Uh, as of right now, <laughs> I still deny the existence of a bass guitar. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, OK. Yeah, but I'm um, I'm working on it. Like, I don't know. It's it's not like the songs are easy either, you know, yeah. like. If anything, I I think having that technical metal background on guitar helps you do some of those things on bass, but you're still a guitarist playing bass. Like, I don't know if you're a bassist. Some of these, like, so some songs I pick out, but, like, I'm making an inherent effort to not. You know, like, I'm practicing not. Like, I mean, I... It's great. It's a great opportunity to learn how to play bass, not just play a bass, so... Anyway, um, I'm getting better at it. It's, it's not the technicality of it. It's the rhythm, man. Like, I have Thomas Rex syndrome, like you said. Like I'm yeah, you like are math, math for it, and it's hard. You are the rhythm at that point. And, uh, yeah, I've never played bass in a band because of that. Yeah, <laughs> right. I just don't right. have it. My drummer just looks at me and is just like... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guy. What are you doing? He's, I'm like, man, this might be easy for you, but this is hard. Like, I can riff all day on the bass. What I can't do is a 30-second 
perfect stream of 16th notes and not fall out of rhythm. I just can't. So I can't yet. That's a better way to say that. I will be able to. You'll be able to. Yeah. Um, one thing. So before recording Hornbill stuff, I have uh, never been able to do that. Um, but I can confidently say that I can do that now. Um, nice. And so it's doable. It's doable, but it takes a lot of fucking effort just to sit there and do a consistent, 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 With a metronome. consistent, consistent, consistent to a metronome. Yeah. yeah. I know. Um, uh, yeah, recording wise, uh, re- if you're a musician out there and you've never recorded, um, recording music and playing music are two very different things. Um, and that's why studio musicians exist because. Uh, it's an entire world separate of playing music, and you kind of have to have a computer for a brain. And um, yeah, definitely. To a point, I've gotten better at it, but yeah, it, it's rough. Yeah, definitely. And I don't know the the skill came a little bit quick. Like it didn't take me forever to adjust to it, <clears throat> like recording at least. Um, yeah. But it, there's definitely a learning curve. And same with, I mean, Geronimo, you know, we play to a, we play to a click, of course, and samples live. I mean, it's, it wouldn't be possible without that. Really? You no. Know, it would be very hard. I mean, there's a lot of weird time signature changes and tempo changes. Um, and and you, you just, do you just beat map and play that all to a click? Uh, yeah, so... Our drummer runs it. He just runs it, runs through Patty, and it's it's just like a yeah. I, we have the samples. In some cases, the samples come from the demos that we go to the studio with. Okay. Um, in most cases, honestly, like so, Brandon, the singer, um, he'll like he'll make a song, and then the sample will be in it. Um, and the song gets passed around to various members, you know, and worked on, doctored up. <clears throat> but the sample usually makes it through to the finished product. Interesting. Because um, he tends to write with or around stuff like that. So, See, that it's, it's super uh, crazy to hear that because Ryan and I are the exact opposite. We play nothing to a click because it's easier for us. Um that and having to program the click the way it should be is a lot so oh yeah it's a t- it's terrible or we hear about it a lot i wouldn't know <laughs> i don't do it myself but i know that it's a pain in the ass and um yeah so i everything about in ears is a pain in the ass <laughs> and but it's also i don't know it's pretty handy like there's a lot of samples in geronimo songs dude like um, that's true too pretty much all of them you know yeah. and I, i'm sure our lead guitarist would very much like an excuse to loop them and do it live um but i just don't know if it's you know it, it sounds great sampling them too so gotcha all right uh but yeah giants of atlantis you guys are in the studio now or you have been in the studio yeah now yeah, now okay. we, ha- we have another date in a couple weeks. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll have this done this winter here. Cool. We'll be trying to have this EP out probably, like, if it's later than February, I will not be as stoked. <laughs> That's okay. kind of, Yeah. Tracy, you want me to play this little clip of yeah, yeah, Giants play it. real quick? The song's called Chasing the Shadows. Um whole concept feeling EP about underwater monsters and samurai and shit. Interesting. Okay. You just tell me when to stop. This should be loud enough to where we can hear it, but also um, to where we can talk over it. Okay, it's just not going to play, so let me do it again. That's tight, though. <laughs> I already hear the deathcore influence yeah. from your vocalist. You can hear the within the ruins in this chorus, or the or the, yeah. the Iron Maiden. So yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't Pretty think that's dope. this part is as heavy without those particular vocals. No, it's it's yeah, it's not. I agree. Dude, I love a good swaying metal riff. Yeah, me too. This one makes me do like a stupid dance when we do it live. Because <laughs> it, it, it kind of sways it's like a little bit of a waltz. Yeah, I hear that within the ruins. I hear Iron Maiden. We'll make it through this little part here and cut it. This is tight though. Oh, actually, yeah. I think I sent you. Well, I hope you're impressed because I think this is my demo. <laughs> okay. I dig it. Yeah, well, that's still it's still a good scene. Um, yeah, I think it's missing a lead guitar track. But I still hear too. I don't know. Anyway, this is a new song called Dude, Jump. Yeah, and I'm pretty excited for it. It's it's heavy, and metal shows are like the most fun to play. Oh, absolutely! Nothing beats a good freaking metal show. Yeah, I've played in. I was the singer of a. I guess it would be deathcore. Um, we did some weird techie things too, but. Um, at like that whole Sumerian era time frame and that was just a blast we played all oh, Baltimore sure. and DC and up in like PA and stuff too and that was super fun so where are you based out of? Uh, so I live in Salt Lake City right now um, that's where I thought yeah I've been all over the place though um, yeah not yeah. Jacksonville though <laughs> I, you know, it's it's actually pretty cool. Jackson. I be, cool. I've heard a lot of things about Jacksonville specifically, and it seems if there's a place in Florida that I'm about, it's Jacksonville. Um, and not only Same because piece. Fred Durst is from there. So right, right, right. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, um, but it yeah. seems pretty sick here. I don't know. Um, like some local names. I mean that. There's there's some good bands like the DIY scene in Florida is great. It you really know, is. Um, I Jazz has say, Glazed, which is Glazed is just the the dopest. Yeah, I've met a good handful of people on Twitter and Instagram from Florida who play in like DIY bands. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, some of the, I mean honestly, some of the best around. It's just I don't know. Florida's booming with a bunch of cool shit, so it's neat. And also not. I mean, and you know, also the, not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, you know, that's like contrast, I feel like is required for good art to some degree. Amen. Um, yes. Uh, Salt Lake City definitely proves that, if anything. Provides you with <laughs> <laughs> plenty Salt of Lake. contrast. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah so um, we're going to move on here to uh, yeah. Little Geronimo. Um, and I'm going to use your words here because I found them hilarious. Um, when we first started talking, I have a message from you telling me, uh, Geronimo is a no drop tunings or power chords elitist band. Only Telecasters, PRS, and Studio Starts Allowed. <laughs> yeah. And I just got the biggest fucking kick out of that. And I think that's so funny. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's like... But like it, it makes so much sense and it's just yeah. it's just funny it's just like that math core freaking but not math core math rock math yeah. i don't know i, get I don't it. know either nobody knows math pop That's Ma awesome. yeah math pop is a really good way to put it because you guys yeah. are definitely um definitely palatable to the point where you don't have to have any of that music theory background to to really get into that music so um yeah. yeah, that's kind of the goal, for sure. I think it's super cool. Um, it's for anybody out there, if you know Circus Survive, um, and I would assume you know Strawberry Girls, it's kind of a good meeting in between there. Um, I love that. That's yeah. what I. That's what I hear when I listen to you guys. You, your your own yeah. little specific thing, and I don't know. I think it's cool. Um, Thank you. 
But uh, yeah, so you guys have an EP out, um, Kingdoms, which was pre you, I'm assuming. Pre me. Okay. Pre-me. Yeah. Um, and then uh, two singles which are currently up on Spotify. There's Glow, which I'm in love with. It's a, Me too. a stupid Me amount. Too. Um, and then What to Say, which just came out a couple of months ago, May? Yeah, it came out in May. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, both of these are sick, and both videos are sick. Um, who comes up with your videos? Because... I, uh, I spoke with Liam about this a couple of weeks ago, um, and just the the resurgence of good music videos, and um, these two are not out of that realm because they're I, they're just they're so good. Thank you. So the music video thing is um, it's funny because so our singer Brandon. Um, you know, everybody does their parts, but it's fun. The band actually formed in the VIP line at a Circus Survive show. No fucking way. Yeah. So, um, they would love that, you know. Um, but, yeah, yeah so we're, Brandon, we're gonna, we're, Brandon, we're, yeah, we're yeah. gonna talk through this as we're listening yeah. to this and watching this. So, um, that's the singer Brandon, right? He, the, the videos are definitely his, he pushes them. And it's definitely like, a, but these videos are going to be sick and people are going to love these videos. And we're like, yeah, the videos are sick, but also we have to have money to promote the videos, you know, like the standard conversation. Yeah. Um, but the videos get made, you know, and they're good and we all love them. So, um, but they're generally, you know, a lot, a lot of these rude ideas come from Brandon. Okay. Yeah, um, this one is super clever as you guys move in and out of space. He's consistent and not everything else is. Um, Like, that is a perfect cut, for example. He walks into this room and uh, you guys are just playing there and he's already there. Like, it's just super clever and it goes with the music and it's just fucking cool. Thank you. Thank you. So this video... I mean, I'm guessing a lot of people caught the reference, if I, we can stretch and say a lot of people have watched this, that um, this is like an eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, is okay. what this is referencing, right? Like, um, like he's chasing the girl, but, you know, he only sees the girl out of his corner of his eyes, he follows her, opens the door, goes somewhere else, she's not there, that type of thing. Um, so it's pretty heavily influenced by that. And it was actually, we built these sets, and by we, I mean mostly Brandon, like, literally built those bookshelves. And we found those books. Um, This is a local library, or a local bookstore. But, um, yeah, we had two rooms. We filmed it at his work, right? So in paint rooms. Um, Yeah, this video was intensive, you know, we, uh... It, this took us like three days, like 13 hours a day. I Damn. Mean, this was, it was brutal, honestly. Um, and that's Nicole. That's my girlfriend. Okay, sick. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Good, so one yeah, thing so I do cool. want to point out about this video is uh, you are wearing an In Angles shirt. Um, of course. And... Uh, I, one, have the same shirt, and two, uh, wore that when I hiked rim to rim on the Grand Canyon, um, Shinfo, but, uh, two very cool things happening in a very cool band's very cool shirt, so, yeah. um, oh, in angles is like, I mean, that's just S tier, I mean, it's like, Yep. There's nothing else that sounds like it. Not a single band. Hornbill, maybe. You know? Uh, yeah, I mean... that. that I, I get it, but... <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, there's, I know. there's nothing. There's nothing. All those choke artist bands, dude. Shout out to choke artists, for sure. Yeah, they're freaking geniuses. Yeah. Super cool people, too, you know? And, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've met a, a good amount of people through um, 
through choke artists, mainly Snooze and Logan. Um, I've I become love Snooze, dude. pretty oh good God. friends with him, and uh, that band yeah. is so good. Yeah, it's yeah, God, they're just fucking phenomenal, honestly. I mean, and... not I, I discovered them from Invalids, of course, because yeah, Invalids is like the gold standard of math rock. <laughs> that was like at least to me, like like it, it doesn't get much much ma- more math rock than invalids. Um, yeah, it's very true. Um, I think the only way you get mathier is if you start going into like math core stuff, and you're talking like Psyopus and freaking crazy, crazy things like that. But some of these uh, tech death bands do, you know. But I mean. I, Obscura is the craziest music ever. Fretless basses. I mean, just yeah, like... It's just nuts. So dope, though. So dope. Um, this was a family member's house for this video. This was a lot of fun. It's definitely a cool spot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. The water was so cold, you don't see me in the scene when everybody goes underwater. That's Shinfo. <laughs> because I hopped right out that water. That's so funny. Yeah, so th- yeah. this was the, this was the first song I heard from you guys, and this was me looking this up after um, you reached out to me at some point. I don't remember if it was just talking about guitars or what, but... Um, and yeah, I just this song is such a fucking jam, um, and it's uh, the video is fun. It's a good fucking video. It's just, and it's fun. It's happy, and it makes you feel yeah. good. It was happy when we did it. It really was. I mean, it was. That's like the the general Geronimo vibe is like positivity, love, have fun. It's just know, good like, vibes, man. Like what to around. say is probably the closest thing to a dark, a darker song that we, you know, that we're gonna have on a piece yeah. of art that will come out at some point. <laughs> so, are you guys doing an album for these things, or uh, are these just standalone singles and they'll be their own thing whenever you guys start recording or are recording? Uh, there is, um, there is no no announcement made. We most definitely have things coming sick that's what i want to hear mm-hmm. yeah um we got super stoked to play with strawberry girls coming up here i did see that i have that on my notes and that's pretty fucking cool um that tour is gonna be super cool um thomas too is on it i was yeah. like this is ideal do you know what he's doing is he doing his own thomas rack on the shoreline stuff or a little bit of yeah i mean i yeah so he has a new album coming out the thomas rack and the shoreline album um i imagine we'll get some new material on his twitch stream i've seen some of uh you know he showed some of it yeah and it's um it's sick you know, you know he's also working on new just like vinyl. I don't know if you heard that, but that's exciting. I did not know that. That's pretty yeah. fucking cool because I love just like vinyl. Oh yeah, for sure. I love everything that it has been touched. You know, yeah, like it's honestly, just, yeah. Um, but I imagine he'll be playing his. I know for a fact he's playing his solo stuff. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you got STP my X or something. You know, like one or i don't know that i'm i don't know that but i wouldn't be surprised you know dude so because you brought it up i have to ask you are you an fcp remix guy or an fcp sits gepgp guy i'm gonna be honest there's only one right answer by the way okay well i'm gonna very easily see say fcp remix no No but get off the air I have have redeeming qualities, I promise. (laughs) Because, I mean, I love that song, but that's not in my top 20. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, it's... I'm... I am... Ghost Ship. 
Phantom on the Horizon. Phantom on the Horizon, Ghost Ship. Yeah. Beginning to end is just a complete like The Walls Bloodlust Part Five to me is maybe the greatest song ever made. Like that song is just when it's you listen there. to it, yeah. you're like, oh, okay, so this is where like Swancore comes from, like yes. black and white, you know. Um, yeah, and then and then probably Doppelganger and Manipulator are equal to me. They're both utterly perfect, you know. So I mean, gotcha. I don't think, yeah. I but. I so I fell in love with um, their self-titled before Doppelganger. Um, I mean, me too, that, kind of. Um, and I don't know why, but Doppelganger to me, um, the recording quality was not as good as the first one, in my opinion. So I only listened to the first one. Um, and it took me a lot of time to get back into Doppelganger and listen to the songs that weren't on the self titled. And yeah, but um, yeah, Manipulator, incredible. Um, Phantom on the Horizon, Ghost Ship stuff. That is and the unlikely event is incredible. I mean, they're all incredible. It's all so different, and it's a, like each album is its own. It's a different band almost. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, um, I, I love OK. Um, I love t- OK too. People shit on that album, dude. Inside Out is one of the hardest yes. fall of George. Fall of George. Yes. Band. That breakdown, yep. Bro, I get even weird. Like, okay, three point two, the black and white one, yep. cover art one. That mix, like the extended songs and stuff. This song has like a five minute breakdown, and it's so tight. The just the the intro riff to that song, where um, uh, who is it? Um, Andrew that's screaming. Uh, not yeah. Thomas, but it's just yeah, the oh, yells, I'm yeah. nothing on. I'm an illusion. Yeah. I'm dying. I'm sorry, dying. Inside out. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, it's, so it, so it, yeah, it, it's it's one of those riffs uh, that uh, I call them table jumping riffs. It just makes me want to jump through a fucking table. Like it's it's hype. Yeah, I know. It, it too, is it is hype musical. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah that album's good, dude. Like I don't know, I it was heavier than people were expecting. I think, and I think like that's straight up like a mathcore album. Absolutely. You know, that's just with some scramsy like but that album felt authentic to me you know and i think uh, that people uh, forgot that each album of theirs is incredibly different from the one before it and when that yeah. came out it was what is this this is totally different and because it didn't sound like anything of what any of the four or five six albums previously they were like mm, i don't know yeah but yeah, the the more I listen to it, the more I fall in love with it because it's just it's so it's a very raw album for them. Um, and, and Savior, dude, yeah, that song is like that's an intimate song. Like that's it's tough to listen to. So like it, I don't know. I was I was blown away by. It. I agree. With that. I mean, I think it's great, and it's not like I'd ever be mad about an album of just heavy The Fall of Troy. Songs, like, <laughs> yeah, I just can't imagine. I can't relate to being mad about that. Yeah, I completely uh, yeah. am on board with that statement. Um, I will. Yeah, jeez. What's the? Um, I, I never forget the name of the new one, and it's the town. Muckle name. to Earth. Yeah, Muckle, Muckle to Earth. Earth. Yeah. Um. So that stuff is their uh, original, the Thirty Years War stuff. Am I correct? It's half and half. Half and half. Okay. Yeah, um, half old. But you can totally tell what the Thirty Years War songs were like. Yeah. Because they sound like self-titled. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I that one's also very good. Um, it's super recent to me too, so I still haven't gotten mm-hmm. the amount of attention into it that it deserves but um, me either not yet i mean i listen to it a lot you know but i don't really know know the songs yet same um i mean we are the future i know you know i know that one that one yep. comes up all the time on my station but um the, i know that the day the strength of men failed had me from the first second you know so you got yeah, the lord of the rings reference i don't know Lord of the Rings, so I did not know that reference, but thank you. <laughs> There's what you call a shinfo. 
There we go. Hey. Shinfo all fucking day. Um, but yeah, that's Little Geronimo. Um, if you liked what we listened to, obviously go listen to them um, and support them. Their shit's on YouTube, and there is stuff in the works, but has not been announced. Um, and then keep an eye out for Giants of Atlantis as well, um, because that's going to be sick. Uh, I Hopefully already... that's only like a month, you know? Probably sick. a month out. That's exciting. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's music. Let's go into uh, some questions. Um, I have, I think, two for us today. And uh, <laughs> the first... <laughs> I kind of did this last week with uh, a buddy of mine from Salt Lake, but I will do a similar version of it today. Um, the question is, relationship advice? Question mark? <laughs> so, um, any I'll, vague yeah, yeah. statement, <laughs> go for I'm it. You can start like, it. You know, um, dang, I'm not fit for relationship advice. Now, actually, I have an incredibly healthy relationship dynamic in my life. And my relationship is adv- advice is don't be a dick. I think, yeah, um, I think being a good person in life, uh, there you could live by that rule is don't be a dick. If something isn't immediately affecting you and your body and your well-being, you have no say over it. Just yeah. live your life. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Be open-minded. Um, and realize that in a healthy uh, relationship uh, with your significant other, that there's a give and take. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's not one-sided. If it is, it's not a, a good relationship. I'll just be frank. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, we, we don't, uh, another one that, that I see the biggest thing is like, we, we don't own our partners. Oh no, right? absolutely and, not. And that's just, that's another, it should be known, but it's not, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, ownership is not a thing when it comes to, friendship when it comes to relationships when it comes to love when it comes to um any human interaction ownership is not um part of those things vocabulary it just isn't um should not ever be I, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah if yeah if uh <clears throat> you are your own person and the other person in your relationship or friendship uh, is their own person and um, you both need to encourage each other you both need to support each other and um, it doesn't ever hurt to do nice things for each other so um, yeah r- relationship advice don't be a dick um, be nice be yeah, nice. yeah. It, mm-hmm. dude, it always goes back to that fucking golden rule do unto others as you would have done unto you um just treat people with respect unless they're blatantly ruining it treat them with respect assume that they deserve your respect until they don't right right Uh, yeah it's frustrating um relationships are work don't think that they're never not going to be um but yeah, as long as you're open-minded and you're not a dick, I think you will be successful. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Uh, let me find my other question here. I got your little template up here too. Shit, man, I don't have a question. So um, I'm just going to ask you, how do you personally deal with criticism? Depends on what I'm being criticized about. <laughs> that's, I think that's the point. honest answer, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's let's say musical criticism. Somebody comes up and they say, uh, 
that guy fucking playing bass in Little Geronimo, um, he could do more bassist things. <laughs> what I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Say more about that. Say more. Say more about that. Yeah. Um, now, I actually have no problem with criticism. I don't know. Uh, I, I, it would be due in this situation, like I, I, yeah, I get that. Um, let let's say um, it depends one on how how the criticism is coming across. Is it constructive criticism or is it someone being a dick? Um, and then it just goes back to what we just spoke about: is if somebody's being a dick to you, then they don't deserve your respect or attention. So, um, if it's constructive criticism and it's something that can genuinely help things. Um, it's tough to not take things like that personally, in my uh, experience, um, just because I'm a sensey little boy. But um, oh, me too. But it's the <laughs> see for me, I I am like passive to a fault. I really, it's like one of my most toxic traits. I think like I am, I am so painfully patient and like passive, like very little pulls a reaction out of me. Do you internalize a lot? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. of that, I okay. mean, Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's just like part of the process for me, you know, I, I don't, I'm pretty conservative with my energy output. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I'm not, interested in disagreements in most situations Same. if it's if it's someone i care about you know like I'll, I'll have a constructive conversation but honestly if it's not constructive sometimes i won't you know and that and that can be harmful too because you got to be willing to deal with some discomfort in situations like that sometimes yeah amen um i think we're very uh like-minded when it comes to that um I mean, anything from uh, being out in public to work situations to friendships and relationships, um, critical conversations and like tough, tough subjects are, I tend to approach those with humor and, um, yeah, oh yeah, and a very level head because I don't think <laughs> I I don't feel like I'm capable of diving into those emotions and um, uh, the intangibles that come with that uh, at those points in time so t I am passive that's me exactly that. yeah exactly that's me I just yeah I and it seems crass sometimes it comes off as cold or crass and it's not you know um, yeah but I think it's kind of related to, you know, like, it's kind of like I, I FaceTime all my friends. Like, I never text people, you know, and it's kind of like. See, that's good. I should probably do that more. I tell myself I should do no, that No, nobody more, likes then... it. Nobody likes it. <laughs> nobody likes it. They'll be like, dude, why are you FaceTiming me right now? <laughs> and it's like, because I need a resolution on the reason for the call at that moment. I don't want yeah. to sit on it. I get that. But, yeah. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I think I deal with it pretty well. Yeah. Um, to anybody out there who is not like us, uh, that's okay. Um, taking criticism, uh, just realize that it's, it's not always something personal, especially if it's a work thing um, or uh, even a, an, an art thing. Um, whether it's a uh, painting or uh, uh, playing an instrument uh, somebody says this could be shadowed a little bit differently or that lead could be a little bit different on top of this to, to be a little bit more cohesive um, it's not anything you're doing wrong it's somebody else's opinion and what they think can make I don't know, whatever you're working on a little bit better for you and for everyone um, yeah, definitely. There's like, there's also like art is subjective. Absolutely. But the creation of art is not. There is such yeah. thing as method and technique, you know? Yeah. So like, 
a lot of the criticisms I, you know, I wouldn't even call somebody saying that your lead is flat a semitone. Like that's not a criticism. That's just like a statement. You know, if someone's like, yeah. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking more along the lines of, um, I play this melody over top of uh, this little Geronimo riff, and it's just not blending as well as it is, but it's something technically that I'm super proud of. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I do that shit all the time. My bandmates yeah. just drag me. Just drag me, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, it, it's never going to be something personal, especially if it's people you love uh, suggesting what to do or what could be done maybe slightly yeah. better or just differently laterally even um I, I, that's a big part of it but yeah just i don't know do your best yeah definitely. you can only you can only do your best every day so you only don't get better when you're not doing that that's very true um and i think i've said this every fucking episode at some point or another discomfort makes you grow um Discomfort isn't bad. Uh, it's necessary as humans for us to want to... I, I should say it's habitual for humans to try and fall into our typical habits and what feels comfortable for us, but yeah. we're not learning and we're not growing if we're not uncomfortable every now and then. So um, keep that in mind. You know that Pat the Bunny song? Run from the money? Yeah, run from what's comfortable. No. Oh man, that's a banger. It's like a folk punk singer songwriter. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of history, and if some some random East Coast elitist sees this, he'll probably be like, "Don't listen to Pat the Bunny," and I'll probably be like, "Sorry." But anyway, the, his music's great. Super important to me. Super relatable. You'd probably enjoy it. Okay, I'll check it yeah. out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, so those are the only two questions I have for tonight. Um, let's go on to segments. Uh, to start our segments, this fucking rules. What fucking rules for you, Turner? Um, what rules? So I just got to go visit home for the first time, the Northwest, and like since I moved here, and that was fantastic. Um, so where in the Northwest is home? Uh, Seattle, Portland. Moved here from Portland. Um, lived on the Oregon coast for a you bit. You literally yeah. went almost as far as you could. <laughs> literally, yep. Um, oh yeah. I was great. Got to see my my grandma, my aunt. You know, they're up there. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. And. I see what what else rules in my life right now. Of course, my darling girlfriend rules. Hell yeah. Uh, my cats rule. They're meowing at the door right now. <laughs> um, Let us in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, musically, um, that's a different segment, isn't it? A little bit. Let's, but right, go we'll for it. If it fucking we'll rules, say, we'll, it fucking we'll rules. So I do have what sucks and what rules kind of in the same thing here. So I've been playing World of Warcraft since it came out. Okay. Right? My so entire time. life. Oh, my, my whole fucking life. I'm consumed and it's not ideal, but it's <laughs> just how it is and how it's always been, you know? That's so fine. That's your thing. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so all these crazy testimonies came out about Blizzard. Uh, I've played pretty much every Blizzard game my whole life. Yeah. My studio is covered in Blizzard paraphernalia. Like, I'm about it. Terrible allegations have come out. And it's everywhere. It's yeah. on every news outlet. I and saw it's some things. painful. It's fucking I mean, brutal. it's. And some of these are like people that were like heroes. I mean, it's not just like the evil corporatist Activision people, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's Blizzard names that have been like household names and people that like software developers or gamers like have looked up to for their whole lives. <clears throat> and that fucking sucks. 
That's fucking sick. Yeah, so um, everyone's like, this is the darkest day in, you know, gaming, whatever. Like, I mean, but what rules is it's also like the best because they're being held accountable. Um, today, a bunch of Blizzard employees, like a bunch of the different Warcraft teams walked out. Um, Good. And actions being taken um, and lines are being drawn. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that it's fixed, but if they stick to it, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, so. Um, it's got to yeah. start somewhere. And uh, let's assume that starts here and hope it starts here. Um, because, yeah. yeah, shit like that needs to be held accountable. Um, and, yeah, I hope it is because. It's, yeah, it's a bummer, man. It's awful. It's awful. Like. I mean, a bunch of these content creators, you know, I mean, the biggest Twitch streamers there are, you know, are uh, some of them are quitting, you know, they're quitting playing, they're canceling subs, like all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, this is their career, man. Like it yeah. seems insignificant, but like it's not you have 80,000 people watching your Twitch stream. Like, I mean, these people are like <clears throat> essentially like electronics celebrities, right? Yep. So, um, so it, you know, it's cool that they are willing to do that. And it also sucks, you know, that yep. they have to. Yeah, so there's a whole lot of that to. going on there. And like, I'm probably not going to be quitting playing because like the counter thing is like, well, if everybody does that, there's 6,000 employees there and yeah. not all 6,000 were these people, right? Yeah. So there's also like so much. It's just a. It's a tough topic. It's been on my mind a lot. No, oh, I get it. Uh, one thing I did want to, uh, because you mentioned home, I wanted to bring it up. Uh, I wanted to give you my condolences uh, for your grandfather. Um, I appreciate that. Recently passed away. I'm assuming you went home for that. That was a timing thing. Um, he did have Parkinson's, and we knew. You know, I mean, it was a long time in the making. Yeah. And honestly, it's semi, you know, best case in this scenario. Um, he was only in hospice a very short period of time, like a week. And was, you know, he just checked out. He just good. checked. He just, yeah, it's good. I mean, he was over it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things about it that he would not have liked, gotcha. you know, and, and that tends to be a thing for us more than it does them, yeah. I feel like. And, um, like he definitely wouldn't have wanted my grandmother blowing their savings, keeping him oh, yeah. a quarter of the way alive. You know, I mean, so, but yeah, he gave my first guitar. It was a 70, it was like a, it's like a seventies guild G series 12 string. Nice. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. I saw that you happened. post that the other day and I was thinking, of you and uh, yeah, I just wanted to, that to let you know I was thinking of you, but yeah. Um, uh, losing somebody fucking sucks. So I, uh, that's up there. Parkinson's fucking sucks. Disease does suck. Suck. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, Indeed. uh, uh, my fucking rules is, uh, building shit. Um, just physically building shit with your own hands and, uh, making things. Um, it's cathartic. It's, uh, an outlet and it's fun so um, even if you're not uh, if you don't think you're a handy person or an artsy craftsy person make yourself uncomfortable for a bit and try something new and try and build something um, you can't hear just in case this hasn't uh, captured that but if you it, make yourself uncomfortable and um, build something, try and do something a little out of your realm. And, uh, especially if you need some kind of release or some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, some cathartic experience building something and look, being able to look back on it and be like, yeah, I built that. That's, it's a good fucking feeling. And, uh, if you yeah. haven't experienced that, I would like, I, I'm, I implore you to try and feel it. <laughs> Um, and then right into my fucking socks. Um, I mean, yeah, losing somebody socks. Um, insurance and uh, mental health 
uh, mental health resources suck. Uh, yeah. So Currently, I, they're garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to kind of get on my little soapbox here. And so recently, um, I was diagnosed with uh, having OCD, uh, ADHD, PTSD, and uh, some semblance of bipolar tendencies. So... Um, that was in a psych eval, and I was recommended to do a, I don't know, some intensive outpatient treatment, which I was excited about, I was hopeful for, and then I found out that that shit was going to cost me uh, about $1,600 a week for 8 to 12 weeks, <laughs> or until my deductible of $9,500 uh, caught up, yeah, so... um. Hey, insurance places, you have enough fucking money. Help people now, please. Um, yeah, they don't. They don't even. They can't even comprehend the words that you just said. That's you know enough. So um, I, I'm still I I'm in a good spot mentally right now, but like I don't know. It sucks to have. That's the first time I've gone to a doctor in years, and I've been like, wow something might be on the horizon here and that was squashed Resolution. so fucking quick so um yeah i don't know i, I know that's, i'm not the only person that's... dealing with it so if you're out there and you're in a similar situation know that i am thinking of you i resonate with you and i fucking hear you because it sucks um fuck insurance and yeah I mean, you know, I, I I tend to think lean on friends if possible. I know that if I had a friend that came to me with a situation like that and needed help financially, I'd be down. So talk to your friends about it. Yeah, um, I'm very grateful to have the support system I have. Uh, I don't know if I'd be around if I did not have that support system. Same. But... Um, uh, yeah, if you're out there and you do not have that kind of support, please reach out. Um, I am here for you because I know that I would want that, and I, I do want that. So um, having that support is integral, and I am here for you. So uh, yeah. Okay, off my soapbox. Um, no, I mean I I feel you. That's all relevant. I mean that. The same goes for me. My personal experience is, you know, it's an addiction. I mean, I spent a lot of years strung out, not doing good, you know, and I found my way out of it. So, and it's been a long time. It's been like five years almost. So um, it's definitely doable. And I, same thing, you know, if anybody needs help with that, I'm definitely here as a resource. Yeah. Yeah, please. It's, it's hard to think that anybody's gonna give a shit, um, <clears throat> especially in that mindset. But um, I'm telling you that I do. So reach out, please. Okay, um, next segment. Recent jams. What have you been listening to a lot lately? Okay. Uh, I got a lot here. Uh, <laughs> these and my plug are basically the same thing. You know, um, I, I mean, out the gates, glazed. Glaze is DIY pop punk band from Jax. Um, 1999, their most recent EP is a fucking masterpiece. Hell like, yeah. um, I listen to it almost every day. They just put out a new song. Um, Sick. For sure, shout out Glaze. They just announced we got Dikembe, Virginity, Glaze, and Intervention, which is okay. pretty tight. Um, Intervention's another really sick local like pop punk band some all in jacksonville vibes. yeah um oh, dude hell yeah yeah guilt shout out to guilt is also jacksonville i love guilt yeah they're yeah they're jacks um man i thought they were southern florida but that's sick yeah yep um yeah dude there's uh so that's yeah dude our... jacksonville's fucking booming we gotta get down there I mean, metal, we got, I mean, Corrupted Saint, of course, shout out, Tight. Um, 
there's, there's the big ones uh and fairy i i sent you that yeah and fairy is the most slept on tech death band ever i mean this stuff is polished like the bands we were talking about before yeah and um i mean i've been trying to learn to play one of the songs for the last about 17 months you know like it's i mean it, but like each album they're like concept albums and that wow. out the gates i'm sold yeah on that i mean my Same. favorite band <clears throat> favorite band ever no question coheed cambria and it's by miles i mean it's like Kohi, the next closest thing and that's probably like the fall of troy in there somewhere you know ddd gotcha. of course um but yeah anyway their concept albums uh they just put out a new song video it's tight um origami angel is god <laughs> like i bro some i'm hoping they'll come on here one of these days because yeah i love those guys they're the best they are the best i was sick there's no florida date i mean gami gang since the day it came out if, if you're not listening to gami gang and you, you listen gotta. to math rock or pop punk you gotta i mean somewhere city their most recent one like in in my personal list took the number one spot from like enema of the state you know <laughs> like that's hard that's, that's talking hard. harder man yeah yeah i mean that's that's how good that is to me like um so yeah gami gang um I've been jamming this like Pokemon Lo-Fi mix that I found. <laughs> dude, you gotta send me that right now because I'll send it, um, dude. It's so fire. Um, it's so fire. All right. God, I love Pokemon so much. Yeah. Oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> All right. I'm currently sending it to you. Yeah, so, uh my recent jams. Um, I'm just gonna go from what I've been listening to today, and uh, I made this new metal playlist. A couple of weeks ago um just because i wanted to feel like i was freaking 10 years old again and um listening to limp biscuit and godsmack and lincoln park and um uh saliva and uh who else is on there corn is on there and uh pod pod is on there yeah um <clears throat> Fuck, who else is on there? Uh, old Papa Roach is on there. Um, you had to say old. I specifically said yeah, old Papa yeah, Roach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I just... I had a, I've... I read an article maybe t and a week or two ago, and it said, um, if you find yourself resorting to things that made you... F or that made you happy when you were a kid, like, you need to focus on yourself and like make sure that you're you're doing taking care of yourself type of shit and like i've just been watching so much pokemon and listening to so much of okay. this like what's your favorite what's your favorite season you watch the show too so uh yeah, yeah I, I i watched pretty much i went through all of indigo league so like the original pokemon yeah. um and then when they started getting to um uh, the Orange League and stuff like that, and then I even yeah. went and watched the new Netflix stuff with, um, it's just the most recent stuff with uh, this new yeah. version of Ash and Go, and it's yeah. super sick. Dude, that movie Mewtwo Reborn was so dope. So they like it's the original movie, just but they re like redid it completely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, the script like it's basically like it's so similar and. um Oh, I loved it. I, I loved it. I've watched phenomenal. like every 30 seasons of that show. Like, yeah, I, I, that's definitely like, I mean, studio desk side drawer. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, bro. I, I, but I haven't picked it up because I'm like Nuzlocke playing through um, Pokemon Pearl. And okay. I don't for anyone that doesn't know what that is, like if a Pokemon dies, you have to let, you can't use it, you let it go. Okay. Interesting. Um, and I got myself to the Elite Four and built my team wrong. And the next time I turn it on, I'm starting over. So I just I'm not gonna make it. 
Yeah, I, I re- uh, what end of last year, beginning of this year, went through uh, Sword and Shield and had a blast. I, I with love that. it. It's so good. It's so I don't the wild zones, uh, the wild areas, the dens and stuff. As far as end game, like I wasn't super into that. Um, I loved I it. it. Yeah, and I, most people did, you know. So that's cool. Like I loved uh, X and Y, which a lot of people didn't love. So, but. Um, I don't know why I just couldn't really get into it. Like, I think it's cause to me, it's like, you have to do that to be able to play competitive or play online. That's true. Yeah. And that part, I was just like, Oh, so I'm like, you know, you're, I have to do this to do you this. Gotta farm and, everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. But, um, anyway, yeah. So, uh, if, if still liking things you liked as a child means you need to look inside, <laughs> I definitely have some work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, the article is it's like if you find yourself resorting back to that stuff, like it, it's just you need a little bit more. Um, you're like re- reverting to um, like nostalgia, dopamine instead. Yeah, of it, it, basically that, and you just gotta you gotta make sure that you're taking care of yourself, type shit. But I yeah, know, I thought it was cool, and it just so happened yeah. that I was going through all that old stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, well, that makes sense." I, I uh, saw a good one the other day, kind of random. It's like, but it was just like a a tweet, and it was like, "Should you say ironically, last year becomes a part of your personality next year?" And I was like, "That's so it's, true." Yep, it's so true, and that's how we all got so cynical. That's how all millennials ended up so cynical. Like, dude, it's so funny because I was I had this exact conversation with somebody over me saying the word sick to describe something. And like, I remember it was like, yeah, somebody was saying sick. And I was just like, oh, yeah, like that's sick. And like, right. Yeah. I remember it was like, oh, all right. Like, that's just what we're going to say now. And then I just it started going and going and going. So I'm hoping that next year I'm starting to say things as the, my adjectives are choice and nectar um, because oh, nectar. that sounds that's, dumb uh, as that's, fuck nectar's now. Sick. Nectar's sick. <laughs> I like it. So I 2022, sick. when yeah. uh, you and I talk, we're gonna be saying uh, shit is choice and shit is nectar. So yeah, <laughs> I, I like nectar. That's a good one. Um, I say ideal a lot. Uh, yeah, it's ideal. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I woke up with this. I woke up with this. What have you woken up with in your head that uh, you can't really describe why? Um, or maybe you can't describe why, but you've just woken up within your head and it's just there. Well, today, I had a pretty good day today. I got to sleep in. I didn't open. So I work in fine dining at the beach during the days. Okay. Um, and I got to sleep in. I didn't open. So nice. I woke up like pretty stoked. I showered, had coffee, shaved, was like, all right, listen to some Gami. Um, I listen to Origami <laughs> Angel almost every morning because it's hard to have a bad day if you start I your day with that. I can see that. Um, I also do a lot of Reliant K in the mornings. Like I listen to Reliant, early Reliant K all the time in the morning. Okay. Um, but yeah, honestly, this, this blizzard shit has been weighing on me. Like that's been in my head a lot. Um, I had hanging out with you in my head and with good reason. I've had glow stuck in my head since I forever. Um, uh, I was going to have a band meeting, um, but that didn't happen. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, we were just going to like meet up and talk about, you know, things, things. coming up. Oh. Yeah, things coming up. We're going into the <laughs> studio this weekend again. Sick. Um, and um, we've been going a lot. Uh, so this weekend, we're going to, to do a song that's probably my favorite one. Dope. Um, that's exciting. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what's been on my mind. Just just the go. There's, I have this problem of not having enough hours in the day. I really don't. You know, I, I overcommit to everything. And like you said, the whole run from what's comfortable thing. I mean... I am, I know myself and I have to do that. Same. The amount of shit. That's one reason I started this podcast is so I had more to do 
um, and I was just forcing my brain to not be, you know, inside itself and thinking about dumb shit all the time. Um, yeah, the amount of sports I'm playing, the amount of music I'm playing, the amount of just extracurricular shit. Uh, I play a lot of hockey. Uh, I play okay. f- flag football. It technically, right now it's out of season. Um, softball just started up. I'm playing kickball tonight. Um, nice. That's fun, yeah. though. I, I love that. Like, I was into disc golf for a little bit. I honestly, I'm too committed. Like, I don't, I have a lot, and it's really hard for me to find time. Like, I used to play ultimate free, or like uh, disc golf a little more. Um, yeah. But it's been hard for me lately, but that's cool that you've got yourself involved, especially with the team sports like that. Yeah. Who's your NFL team? Uh, it's going to be rough, but uh, the Browns. That's not rough. I'm a bandwagon Browns fan, man. That's yeah. not rough at all. You guys are about to win a Super Bowl. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely it. more of an NHL guy than I am anything. Um, but for NFL, I have always, for whatever, I, since I was a kid, I always loved that uh, the actual uh, the dog logo that they have. Um, oh yeah, it's thick. It's thick. I wish that right? they used that as like their primary logo, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 why I'm a Browns fan, and it's been rough uh, forever. So it has. I'm, I'm blessed to be a Seahawks fan. I mean, we, you know, it's a great program. But absolutely, since I moved to Jacks, I'm a Jags fan, and that's a little less easy. So, being from Seattle, are you pumped for the new NHL team, the Kraken? I am. I am. You know, you know that that city cannot stand that logo and name, and yet, but the internet loves it. Really. Yeah, I know. I'm like, the everybody I talked to while I was there, like family, family, friends, they're like, yeah, it's just kind of, I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, Twitter it's loves sick. it. Yeah, yeah, the colors are sick. Like The color scheme is probably the best in the NHL. Like, there is yeah, it's clean. that baby blue, that teal, and like the, the navy with it is just, it's impeccable. It's perfect. And then the, the little dash of red. Uh, yeah, in the eye, yeah. I think it's perfect too, and like, and it totally, bro. The Puget Sound has a sea monster vibe, for sure. Oh, 100 you know, like, percent. So I, I think it fits too. I mean, but all the Northwest teams have clean uniform. Like the Trailblazers have the, like the cleanest jerseys always. Yeah. yeah I caught some of those Damian too. Lillard city jerseys, and they're, I love it. Hell yeah. But it, that's yeah. sick. Um, okay. Shinfo, we've kind of <laughs> had Sprinkle. some Shinfo. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, what is your Shinfo for the week? Oh, wait. I woke up with... Um, I woke up with this in my head. Is This shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. This shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Uh, that needs to be... Worked into a hornbill breakdown. <laughs> That's some pulses shit. You know, do you know pulses? I do. I actually am talking with them next week. I think. Oh really? Yeah, I'm super pumped because yeah, I love those yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah, they um, seem really cool. Yeah. That's definitely like this greater Twitter crew that we have. <laughs> like. Yes. Um. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Shinfo. Go for it. Um. Man, I need to come up with something here. Okay, so my chef at my job, or one of my cooks, is the funniest human I've ever met in my life. And he always says wildly inappropriate things that I shouldn't laugh at. But it's it's hard not to. Yeah. You know, like, um, and it's okay, because after I'll be like, bro, you can't say that shit. Right, so, <laughs> so it's okay. But, um, Anyway, he always says this thing, and today he was saying it a lot, and I have no idea what it means. I have absolutely no idea. And I hope it's not a bad thing, but we'll see. He's always like, it's all fun until that rabbit get that gun. And I'm like, what does that mean? And he said, you know. I'm gonna assume that he's making a Bugs Bunny and Elder Fudd joke. I mean, that's like the assumption, but it's not applicable, so it's confusing, right? Like. It's, it has zero application. Yeah. That's definitely Shinfo. <laughs> yeah. But what does that mean? I, like, 
So yeah. my friend that said I look like I got the John Waters sash, I was telling him about it, and he looked at me and was like, huh, dude. <laughs> like, and felt it. You felt it. Yeah. So I know it, like, I don't know. I don't know. So Maybe it's just one that. of those things. It's just, just yeah. It's just one of those yeah. things. He said, he says, once that rabbit get that gun, bro, it's game over. That's what he says. Game over. Yeah, I'm pretty say, sure. I, yeah. I, I have to assume that it's directly referencing Bugs Money and Elmer Fudd. Because. Yeah, yeah. It, that's the only thing that makes sense. It's I kind of makes sense, but it still doesn't in context. <laughs> Uh, when I'm like, I'm like, hey man, uh, how long on, uh, how long on that French toast? And that's how he replies. <laughs> like, so, yeah, that's right. completely, yeah, no yeah. context, no nothing. All right, um, so that's my shinfo. My shinfo is uh, my cousin flies out here from Long Island next week, and we're going to go hike some fourteen thousand foot mountain in Colorado. So that should be sick. That's a tall mountain. It's a tall mountain. I miss gonna, mountains. It's gonna kick our ass, but it'll be sick. It'll yeah. be nectar. It will be nectar, yeah. <laughs> it will. Shinfo. Um Okay. Uh give somebody credit who's been killing it for you lately. Um Man, all all my bandmates in both of these bands, of course. I mean I you know, I'm I'm not the one that's like always missing practice but i do you know i do miss it i'm super busy um and i also have a major major problem with being lazy you know and like <laughs> and, procra and like procrastination or being lazy so definitely shout out to my bandmates i mean geronimo like david drummer does i mean does a lot you know um and yeah he's been going through it so showing him some love um Lord. yeah dude i mean in in giants chris or the uh other guitarist i mean he's been holding that band down for years <laughs> you know so he bought a house to for, for it to practice my grandmother um always killing it you know what yeah. i mean her 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 life partner passed and she's put together yeah you know in a day so just and that's like inconceivable i mean i'd be a wreck for fuck ever man. forever <laughs> yeah yeah forever um of course my girl nicole is always too um yeah so those are definitely some some key key pieces to the to this puzzle oh yeah uh, not Ryan in Hornbill, but I'm going to give my other buddy Ryan, Mason, credit. Um, he's been dealing with a bunch of shit lately, and he is handling it with a plum, if you will. Uh, and uh, he probably will never hear me say this, because I don't think he's on the internet or anything, but um, uh, I love you, and you're killing it. And thank you for helping me build things. He helped me build this studio um, in my garage. It's a nice so. studio. I was going to ask about it. I was going to ask about some of your toys here. It's sick. Um, to my left here, if I could angle the pen that way, that's uh, this most recent cab and head that I've refurbished. Um, there's Ryan's drum set back there. There's my buddy Jeff's drum set back here. I there's a... A Harvey Benton eight-string guitar back there. Uh, I got I my see that. Islanders thing right there. I got I all my other EMGs. I see EMGs on maybe. Oh. Is that a Jackson or an or an uh, Joe Satriani Ibanez looking? Maybe what? Yeah, it's a it's a normal RG Ibanez. Um, yeah, I've had that thing for years, and I uh, I sanded it down uh, at one point, and I just sharpied all over it. Um, let me grab it. I'll show you. Yeah, I'm grabbing a toy too. You should have. We should have show and tell. You should. Um, yeah. But this is. Oh, that's so sick. That's so nectar. 
Uh, yeah, but I sanded it down, I just sharpied all the hell over it, and then I, like, epoxied over top of it so it'll stay there forever, but... So, this is my first... My first base, really. Okay. And check out the glory that is this pick guard that David helped me make. Ooh. Just sticker bombed? With a bunch of anime guys Anim and girls? A bunch of anime girls, that's it. Just some weeb bullshit. I love it. Yeah. That's sick. Um, and I'm quite happy with it. It's just a little jazz bass. Um, and Nicole, my girl, helped me with this one. This is the telly. This is Ooh, actually so in... That was in one of the videos. Yes, this is... Uh, it was in actually both. One, okay. It was in Glow before the job. Okay. And then I bought it from Adam, the guitarist. And then I did. we did this to it, and then it was in What to Say. And we thought that was cool because it was like a whole Shinfo journey of an instrument. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, Ryan, uh, love you, buddy. Good job. You're killing it. Um, let's listen party and we're going to listen to what you sent me just a second ago. That is the new Inferi. The new Inferi. Let's... I mean, you asked what tech death is. Like, this is a pretty good example Would you here. Would consider despised icon tech death? Not really. I mean, no. so like Nia Bliviscaris, uh, Again, necrophagist. I mean, that's usually everyone usually knows that one. That's so just like, more uh, consistent, more consistently fucking crazy. Uh, cattle decap. Cattle okay. decap is like slam tag. But. I already like this a lot. Yeah. Kinda early facelessy. The faceless is a tech death band. Okay. Yeah, I mean the the that's probably like the high, you know. That's like the more uh, Sumerian vibe. Even though I think they're are they nuclear blast? I don't know who they're. Uh, uh, at one point they were Sumerian, I yeah. think. I love that band, you know. Um, Dude, Planetary Duality is one of my favorite albums. Dude, the, the riffs on that album are so unreal. So dope. Dude, that's a metal version of In Angles. Like, that It album, really that, is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my, my, my go-to warm-ups is... Uh, the Ancient Covenant, just doing that first riff, the bow, 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 so sick, dude. It's so sick. Um, yeah, this is damn. Dope. So, like, so, like, Elitist wouldn't say Rings of Saturn is tech death, but it is. Right? Okay. I love Rings of Saturn. <laughs> They're nuts, dude. We're, we're, oh, yeah, this is it's yeah, so dude. Sick. Uh, Beneath the Massacre is de uh, definitely tech death, then, and you will love them. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it right now on my phone. I'm looking. Um, so they have a, a their most recent album came out last year, and that was my uh, or two years ago. That was my album of the year for that year. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm looking now. All right. Um. Uh. What's your what what song should I add to start? Um, oh, Fearmonger. They have they had an album come out last year. Was it last year or the year before? I can't remember. It was last year. Oh, it was um, last. Yeah, it was one of my albums of the year. Um. Yeah. yeah Fearmonger is sick. There okay. is. Fuck. It's either track seven or eight. Read some of those towards the end. Flickering light, tarnished Flickering legacy. Light. All right, Flickering light. Flickering light. All right, I'm sure I'm gonna love this, dude. I mean, you're gonna, it's gonna blow you away, dude. It's so nuts. But do you know Plaguebringer? That's another. I've heard of them. They're so sick too. Um, but yeah, dude, this is like they have like a a blackened 
vibe to them. I'm a stuffer for black matter, so... Yeah, dude, this fucking video is nuts, too. This is so good. I'm so stoked for him, too, because this is, uh... Oh, man. That's so, so rough. Um, they announced this with a new album. Um, Sick. Yeah, but those albums, I mean, it's too easy to listen to all of them, beginning to end. Uh, there's like a Lovecraftian-themed EP. Mm. It's called A Sunless Realms. It came out more recently, and man. Real good. Fuck yeah. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna have to be listening to a good. lot more of them. All right, um, cool. That's Let's Listen Party. Uh, plugs. We've spoken about Lil' Geronimo and Giants of Atlantis already, but uh, where can we find you guys and uh, anything else? Yeah, um, you know, of course, the usuals, like socials, Little Geronimo, uh, band, Little Geronimo Bandcamp, uh, easy way to do it insta link uh, in our bio you know yeah. it's like our link tree it's got all the info there um we got some neat shirts out there you know if i'm doing my capitalism thing here we got some neat shirts helps pay for a theoretical everything, album yes. yeah helps pay for everything um i do serve eggs in the morning still but merch helps um yeah you know i I, I definitely uh, stoked to come hang out. Um, yeah, dude, I'm so happy that you wanted to do this, and happy that we, like, we have done it. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I love Hornbill. Cool. I'm being. I remember when you sent me that stuff. Which and stuff? Did I send you the the LP2 demos? Yes. Okay. Well, I might have to send you updated stuff because a lot of stuff has changed, and uh, we have a lot of features. So. Um, just we're beyond excited and uh, we're definitely I wouldn't say we're dragging our feet but we're definitely taking our fucking time with it because we want this to be the absolute best thing it can be um, you have to you have to you can't yeah. rush yeah like I remember one of the first things I was like you said I was like I remember hearing a horrible thing and I like commented on one of the things I was like like whole tone noodling is like my kink, you know. <laughs> and you were like, same. You know? Yeah, it holds and true it, even today, yeah. and it'll hold true in the future. It will. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks so much for coming on and talking with me, um, and ultimately just shooting the shit. Um, yeah, for sure. I don't know. I, I like getting to know everybody, and especially people that I mean we've been talking for a good amount of time now so um yeah. i'm pumped to come down to fucking jacksonville and rock out whether it's with Derek or with hornbill um oh it's gonna happen and you little geronimo very well might make it out there too well yeah. we are happy to have you and uh it'll be a fucking blast it will but yeah, cool. Uh, I think that's a good spot to wrap this episode up. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Um, go check out Little Geronimo, Giants of Atlantis, um, and... Uh, Hornbill. Hornbill. Yes, go check us out. Yeah, or just listen to this, and that's fine, too. Cause <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. There are things coming, I promise. Get off my back. Um... <laughs> I'm jealous uh, you have people on your back about it. It's like one person. <laughs> Just wanted to make it seem like there were multiple people. Shout out to you. One Shout person. out to you! <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you again, and uh, we will catch you next time. Thanks for nothing! Bitch!